All right. We're all set. Let's go ahead and start this. Do we really have to introduce ourselves again? They all already know who we are. I guess we can skip the intros of ourselves this time. Okay. Good. Because it's getting lame at this point. You should know about lame. Preteen. Really? How is Shake It Up doing? Oh yeah. It got cancelled. F you, preteen. Don't tempt me, CSC. It's not like you're gonna do something. Nobody is going to do anything. Really? Yeah, really. You all need to pipe down now and get on with the subject of this episode. The IRS imposters? Yes, they are scamming people and they need to be stopped. Okay, Jaguars, you're now watching an episode of The Reboot. And like Britney just said, the IRS imposters have been scamming victims out of lots of money for the past two years. And how have they been doing that? By calling people on their iPhones and posing as IRS agents. And then saying that the victims owe money and back taxes. And then they threaten the victims with the rest in jail time. Saying that if they don't make payments immediately, then they'll be arrested the next day. And this usually works because people are scared of the IRS. This is from Clark.com and written by Alex Thomas Sadler on January 25th, 2017. And I quote, I got a text from a friend of mine telling me about four phone calls he has received lately, all claiming to be from the IRS about supposed lawsuits that are being filed against him. And he's not the only one getting these calls. Every day, more and more Americans are being harassed by criminals saying they're from the IRS, with many people still questioning whether they are real. In fact, a large number of the recent calls to Clark's Consumer Action Center, a free helpline that's open 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. EST every weekday to answer consumers' questions, have been about some type of IRS phone scam. Unquote. A Forbes report detailed how a version of the call may go. The person will say, The reason of this call is to inform you that IRS is filing lawsuit against you. To get more information about this case file, please call immediately on our department number. Stated phone number. I repeat. Stated phone number. Thank you. And this seems to work because iPhones seem to have people let their guard down. That is true. On April 28, 2017, a woman in Arvada, Colorado, became one of the many victims of the now notorious IRS phone scam. The Arvada victim spoke out about her experience but did not want to identify herself because of the embarrassment. She got the call on Wednesday morning. The man on the other end of the phone said he was with the IRS and was calling about a warrant for her arrest over taxes she owed. He told her she owed close to $1,800 and then started to roll out the threats. He told her, If you tell anybody anything, you will be arrested, because we are recording everything. She recalls him saying, He threatened her with jail time, an additional $4,000 fine, and said her criminal record could leave her unemployed. And the IRS imposter had her go to a lot of stores and purchase iTunes gift cards to make the payments to him. And the lady said that she didn't want to give her name because of the embarrassment. Uh, you're not the first person in the world to get scammed, lady. There are many different ways to scam someone. People get scammed all the time. So, she doesn't need to feel embarrassed. Well, let me tell you Richard and Murphy's story. It happened on May 4th of this year. And I will quote him. On the date of May 4th, I was eating at a diner when a voice message was left on my iPhone. 
The guy said that he was from the IRS. He also said that this was a very important call and that I shouldn't ignore it. It concerns a very important matter. So, I called a number that he instructed me to call. When I called a number, a lady answered the phone and said that she was Officer Tina Seller of the IRS and then she said that the guy who filed my taxes didn't report a certain piece of information about my federal income. And because of that, I was in trouble for tax evasion. And a warrant was out for my arrest. At that point, I got real scared. And then Tina said that I owed $32,000 in taxes, and I had to pay it immediately, and that if I didn't, I would be arrested tomorrow. And I did believe her, because I do owe the IRS, but I had already made payment arrangements with them. I had agreed to pay a certain amount each month. But now, this woman, Tina is telling me that I have to pay $32,000 immediately, or I would go to jail, tomorrow. Then she told me to drive to Best Buy stores and Target stores, and purchase a lot of iTunes gift cards. Then, she instructed me to go back into my car and read her the number on the back of the card, and I did do that. From 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., we went through this process of me going to Best Buy and Target stores, purchasing iTunes gift cards, going back to my car and reading her the numbers on the back of iTunes gift cards. When my debit card wouldn't work to get more gift cards, Tina Seller told me to go to my bank and withdraw $30,000 to buy more gift cards. When I did that, she told me to go to Winn-Dixie. But instead I went to a footlock store and told one of the guys there what was going on. And the guy at footlock said that it was a scam. When he said that, I really felt dumbfounded and shocked. Then I just hung up the phone on Tina Seller. The automated fraud protection system of my bank called and asked me to verify the unusual activity on my debit credit card. That is when I called the customer service of my bank and told them what happened. So they filed claims against those purchases I made on the iTunes gift cards. Five days later, the $7,000 that I lost because of the scam was put back on my debit credit card on a provisional basis. Then five days later, the provisional basis was reversed and the $7,000 was taken away from me. I filed a fraud affidavit and a police report, but that didn't help me either. Because of this scam, I lost a total of $7,000. The reason why this happened is because I didn't fully understand how the IRS does things. Wow. That's really crazy. I feel bad for him. And a few days ago, in Madison, Wisconsin, a 19-year-old got scammed out of $3,000 by IRS imposters. And it was the same. Emma the imposters left the kid a voice message on his iPhone and said that they were IRS agents. And that this 19-year-old owed $6,000 in taxes and he had to pay immediately or be arrested. The kid called them back on the number that they had instructed him to. The IRS imposters told the 19-year-old to go to Target and purchase a lot of iTunes gift cards. And then, read the numbers on the back of cards to the imposters. After doing that for hours, that is when the kid realized it was a scam. But then, the damage was already done. The kid lost $3,000 because of this scam. OMG. That was obviously his entire life savings. How does a 19 year old get $3,000? How does a 19 year old get $3,000? By saving his money, preteen. And more people are falling victim to this scam. Well, one way of fighting this is to be alert. Richard said that he didn't fully understand how the IRS does things. Well, now, we are going to tell you all how they really do things. Since there are so many variations of this scam, the best way to avoid getting duped is to know what the IRS will never do. According to the IRS website, if you get a call about any of the following, hang up immediately. The IRS will never 1. Call to demand immediate payment over the phone, nor will the agency call about taxes owed without first having mailed you a bill. 2. 
threaten to immediately bring in local police or other law enforcement groups to have you arrested for not paying. 3. Demand that you pay taxes without giving you the opportunity to question or appeal the amount they say you owe. 4. Require you to use a specific payment method for your taxes, such as a prepaid debit card, gift card or wire transfer. And most definitely, not iTunes, Apple, gift cards. 5. Ask for credit or debit card numbers over the phone. If you get a phone call from someone claiming to be from the IRS and you still aren't sure if it's a scam or not, here's what the IRS says you should do. Do not give out any information. Hang up immediately. Contact DITGA to report the call. Use their IRS impersonation scam reporting page. Report it to the Federal Trade Commission. Use the FTC Complaint Assistant on FTC.gov. Please add IRS telephone scam in the notes. And of course, the links to those websites are in the description section of this video or info bar. All right, let's not start with that again. In Ralph's universe, you can't afford to let your guard down. There are many different ways to scam someone. People are getting caught by surprise thanks to iPhones and the fact that people are commonly scared of the IRS. Scammers prey on people's emotions and they often have an element of surprise on their side but not anymore. Yeah, we're fighting back. Our research guy, Ralph Jaguar, has come across and discovered some phone numbers to avoid. These are the phone numbers of known IRS impersonators. 202-448-9092-800-945-840 and 914-499-8026. If you get a call from any of those phone numbers, no matter what that person says, it is not the IRS. And watch out for Bill Anderson. That's obviously not his real name. He may be the head guy running this whole scam. Also, here are some tips for you all to keep in so you can avoid some common and ongoing scams. 1. Don't be pressured into making fast decisions. 2. Take time to research the organization. 3. Check them out on BBB.org, search online, etc. 4. Never provide your personal information, address, date of birth, banking information, ID numbers to people you do not know. 5. Don't click on links from unsolicited email or text messages. 6. If you are unsure about a call, or email that claims to be from your bank, utility company, etc., call the business directly using the number on your bill or credit card. 7. Never send money by wire transfer, or prepaid debit card to someone you don't know or haven't met in person. 8. Never send money for an emergency situation, unless you can verify the emergency. Now, Jaguars, we have a special treat for you all. Ralph Jaguar has decided to start making films and fan films. His first film will be titled IRS Scam Calls, the movie. That's right. And it will be on the Ralph Jag YouTube channel. It's based on the real life situation about innocent victims being duped by IRS imposters. Now, understand. Ralph is working on the film, but it's not done, yet. It will be soon. And when it's done, the link to IRS Scam Calls, the movie, will be in the info bar, slash, description section of this video. And you all know, how skilled, and talented, Ralph Jaguar is. So, you know this movie, will be real good. Why, am I always the last to know about these things why do you think preteen ralph damages is full of surprises oh geez so we're going to start wrapping this up we could really use some more subscribers for all of the youtube channels of 
Ralph J. Images. If you haven't done so already, please check the description section. Slash. Info bar to the links to our channels and web series. And subscribe to our channels. Peace out. Till later.